boxers, some some of your football people, and I bring some of my entertainment people in, in the stage. But we want to break it up. We look, we got athletes that are writing books, right? Yes. Yeah. My next guest is a young man. I had the pleasure to know him when he was a TD bopper driving in his father's car. Like you know, this is like this young man, I am so proud of him, man. I gotta bring him in. Um, I'm not gonna get emotional because he's a grown man right now. This guy is an athlete, but he's writing books. His book right now, I'm in a page, right? I'm, I'm, look, I'm gonna tell y'all, you gotta get this book. It's, 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 it's very important that you support this young man. We're going to bring to, 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 to sports and entertainment Mr. Dr. Eugene Holloman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my nephew, I call him. How you doing, Eugene? What's good with you, young man? Where are you on what? You you're mute? He might be muted. He don't know yet. Yeah. There we go. You go. I I'm muting you and unmuting you. Go ahead. You unmute yourself. <laughs> there, there we, we go. go. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's um it's an honor to be here. I was actually Googling, Googling Ice Cold, man. And so you had one heck of a career. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, he's one of these guys, Eugene, that jab. Like, people didn't think this guy. I always know. This is how I met you. Uh, Ice Cold been coming down here. When I came down, when I first moved down here, when my when when when, when Levi was in Black Street, so Al was one of the first per people we brought around Teddy, right? So we bring it Al around. It was like, yo, you know Ice Cold, and this guy became my friend, man, for over thirty years, man. His jab was so crazy, like people don't know this guy had a wicked jab, but he's very, very sports overall intelligent. Al actually wanted to be a football player. Am I right, Al? <laughs> Yes, yes. I, I thought boxing was stupid and dumb. I'm like, who gets hit, in, hit for a living and get hit in the face? I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to get hit. But then, I mean, back, football was my sport. I love football. I played a little basketball. But boxing took me to the top. Yeah. yeah. Eugene, tell us who, listen, some of the viewers, some of the our friends, they're like boxing people. They're on right now checking you out. So let everybody know who you are and what's your purpose, man. Eugene? Yeah, so I'm a, um, I'm a former two-time all-conference running back at, at James Madison University, right? And I was yeah. drafted going into my, to my senior year. Not early rounds or anything like that, maybe sixth, seventh round. And that's pretty good coming from a, a smaller school like, like James Madison. And so um, heading to my, my summer year, I mean, I was – I was a peak condition, top of my game. Um, you know, everybody knew who I was. I was a man on campus. They were selling my jersey in the bookstore, and and agents were calling me. It was like you do the same thing you did your junior year, your senior year, and I guarantee you, you know, you will finally hear your name um, being drafted at, at the later rounds. And so, um, the first game of the season, my senior year, I remember it was like, like it was yesterday. We played the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill where, where, where Michael Jordan built his name, right? Um, one of the first carries I got that game was like a pitch to the right. So I received it for the, from the quarterback. I remember it was like a 6'5", 245-pound defensive end coming at me. And so I, I put my right leg in the, in the turf to change my direction to the left. And as soon as I did that, my whole body went left aside from you know, my right leg. And and just like that, everything that I dreamt about, you know, for since I was five years old was gone. And I ended up graduating James Madison, but essentially my, my football career was 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 over. I was never never the same. Um I, I came back home here to Virginia Beach and I went through uh maybe about two years of, of depression. Cause because think about it, right? You 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 say you want to be this thing since you was five years old. And here I am, 21 years old, 22 years old. So from five to 22, I gave everything I had to become what I dreamt about becoming. And all of a sudden it was, you know, ripped away. And so my identity was all wrapped up into it, right? That's That was it. And um, to, to come back home and have people say, man, what happened to you? Or people not calling me anymore because I was the life of the party. Everybody want to hang around me. Um and not knowing what I wanted to do for the rest of my life because I had to change directions. I had my trajectory, you know, just just flip 360. 
And so I, I wanted to like kill myself, basically. I remember looking for my dad's gun, like, man, I, I don't want to live no more. I can't do what I what I was destined, what I felt like I was destined to become. You know, I, I wanted to I wanted to end it. And um luckily, you know, I couldn't find my dad's gun. And um I had a family member, a close, close family member. I finally told you remember therapy, going to therapy for depression is not really like a thing in the black household. It's, it's probably That's right. more prominent now, but then it wasn't. And so um, you know, I, I finally confessed about some of the things that was going through my head, how I, I felt like worthless, how I felt like, you know, uh, everybody loved me, now now they hate me, basically. And um, I kind of walked myself out of depression and um, I got an entry level job, finally got a job. And um, I remember telling myself that if I use everything that I learned in sports over the years, I'm talking about the time management, the, the teamwork, the, the perseverance, the hard work, the getting up at, at five o'clock in the morning and just attacking it, just like I did sports and apply it to my life. Like, I want to see how this thing is going to work out. And so that's what I started doing. And I started climbing up the corporate ladder. And I, um, you know, always set these goals for myself. I went back to get my master's. I went back to get my doctorate, but my doctor was like, you know, I didn't really want to do it. I just did it to, to defer my student loans for my master's, right? And then my my uh, professor, she was like, you know, Eugene, you got a gift of writing. And so to hear that I had a gift from somebody other than like athletics, this light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, if she thinks I have a gift, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start writing about something that I want to write about. And that's how like my, my book series came about. Um, it's called the the athlete student is a fictional novel about this young phenomenal athlete. He too wants to be or aspire to be to be a professional athlete, but before he can do that is college. So it takes you through his freshman year of how he balances academics, athletics, the parties, the girls, peer pressure, coaches, teammates, the things that happen on, in a college campus that no one really talks about. Right? We think that these kids go off to college and their life is phenomenal, but even if you're in college, you deal with some real stuff. Right. And so I, I, I take you through the eyes of a first person, you know, tell all story of how this athlete kind of uh, just just maneuvers through all these different things with the hopes that, you know, young kids can really understand that um, it's not all about athletics. Like you education is something that no one can really take away from you. So that's that's been my purpose. I know that was long and drawn out, but I had to lay it out on the table for young Uncle Curry. No, 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 no. This that is, was great. This, this is that great. Was great. We that here, was... man, to learn. Al, what you think, man? That was great. That was uh, absurd. That was so great. You know what? Your life should be in a movie. Your <laughs> book should be in a movie. I think that so. Be short because I'm sure you're not the only person that went through that because I can relate to part of it of the life of depression and sadness when you're so far and always on top on you're so high not drug high I'm just saying physically mentally high mentally and you such on a high and then you some come crashing down everything changes if a lot of people can't deal with that it's just the same thing you can deal with people with these Wall Street brokers, all these money people lose so much money and they feel like jumping out the window. And so many millionaires lost so much money and stop and everything, they want to kill themselves. And you said it so right. In our black community, no one talks about going to see a psychiatrist, going to see a therapist. Uh, that's for crazy people. You know, we don't believe that. We don't recognize that. But it's now as we time change, we acknowledge like, you know, I felt the same thing as the pressure. I think you know I'm a strong black man, I could go through this. But through the years I struggled and just with me like as you as the top athlete, I look at life as a sport. Yeah. You work hard to get to the top. You want like like you worked hard to be the top the the goal is the NFL and work hard. It's the same thing in life. If I'm working a regular job, the goal is not, I just don't want to get a job. I want to be the supervisor or the, or the you know, executive or the, I'm leading up, I'm, at one point I'm at just working, but I'm trying to be the boss. I want to be on top. I don't want to just be down low as one of the workers. I want to become the manager. I want to own my own product. I want to be on top. It's the same thing in sport. 
You just don't want to make the team. You want to be the star. You want to be the top athlete. You want to be the star. You want to be on top. You want everything. So life is sport. You just like that. You want to still achieve to go higher and higher. Whatever you decide to do, whatever the Lord leads you to. And you know what? He still gave you the wisdom and smart to like, you you have so much more than just sports. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. have so much more than sports. You have the gift of doing other stuff. And like, what you doing? You're writing a book. And, you know, God can you because I'm telling you, you can touch so many more people. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. I am so proud of you, Eugene, nephew. I, I really, I, I've seen you. I've seen you, your cousin. Like, I've know, I know you. I know your dad. Like, when you were a little guy. And to you to share this story with me and knowing, you know, later on that I battled depression. No one is exempt from it, man, because I came in from New Jersey trying to change my nephews, my brother, everybody lies when my brother was on Black Street. And then when that stuff was swept up from my feet, I'm like working, going through divorce. Like you were going to those dark places, but I hadn't realized that I, I, my music and my acting was my, 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 my way of life. So I had to apply that in human life and no one understanding. If you're gifted, there's no one can deter you, man. Like I am looking and reading your book. I am blown away. Like, I, like you don't understand how much you are inspiring me. You inspire me. And I, I want to see more of you. Definitely on the platform I have, I'm going to help as much as I can. Me and Mr. Cole push you into your purpose and let you do magical things and things that is above and beyond what you think your calling was. Like Al, not for nothing, this guy was one of the best cruiserweight champions. Look at my cruiserweight champions. Undefeated that. until he went up. Al has a heart of giving. Al is not just meant to be a boxer. He's meant to inspire people is why when God gave me this to say, look, do a podcast and bring and, and center it around Al Cole. It will be more than just boxing. He's going to touch people. Al, closing thoughts on Mr. Eugene Holloway. What do you think? What's some advice you want to give him, man? It's your place, man. I'm going to wait for the next book, and I got the title. You're down, but not out. <laughs> you're down, but you're not out. Eugene, and tell people. I like that, Al. You're down, you're down but, you're not, but you're not out. And Love so it. that's the thing about it is now you're going to have from the rise from when you thought you was down when you thought because whatever the devil intended for evil God turns into good you think you're not doing something you think it's over with but it's another platform to go somewhere else yes indeed absolutely Eugene hey, tell people where they can find your book what's good with you close out whatever you want to say I do want to say sports entertainment. one one quick story Um, so if you guys look at my book covers man I, I, I never want to have a platform and not say this. Um, my brother, my brother's doing 30 years in prison, right? And so when I told him I was writing a book, he was one of my biggest fans. So he he'll call me every Saturday morning. I would, I would read him whatever chapter I worked on the prior week. And um, he started to get real into the book writing process. And I, I told him, I said, I, I got this artist in New York that I'm that I'm you know, working with to draw my book cover. I had this vision and I laid it out to my brother and, I, and I, I got the rough draft from the artist in New York. And I was like, man, he's not getting my vision. He's not getting my vision. And my brother said, um, he put me on hold and he was like, I want you to talk to this guy real fast. And this, and this guy came on and, um, you know, I'm thinking like, you in prison, how can you help me? But I started, I started telling him my, 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 my vision of the book and his, his name is Marcus. And, um, Two weeks later, he sent me the, the first book cover. So these, so I've been working with Marcus um, for all of my book covers. And um, the interesting thing of, about Marcus, when you know I, I got the first book cover, I talked to him once I received it, and I got to know Marcus a little bit. And he, um, he's, he, he'll tell me straight up. He said, "Man, I'm doing life without pro. Like I'm a, I'm a dying here." And I was like, "Man, I was blown away because this, this guy has this, this." this unbelievable gift and the crime that he committed is in the same city I went to college in, in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And so I tell young kids all the time that, you know, one, one bad decision can have everlasting consequences, but to see Marcus still able to share 
his gift with the world through me, through these books, man, is, is a is a story that, you know, wherever I go, I would like to tell. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, that's, on- that, yeah. that's, that's, that's another book. That's another <laughs> book. <laughs> that's another movie. Yeah, You've got the yeah. resources. I'm here with some connections with some film writers, Christopher Nolan, Lynn Gibson. These are filmmakers that are making films on BET Plus, nephew. I'm going to keep you in the line. Um, this is all about just building building partnership. I'm into building ships like Noah. Yes, like sir. God has assigned me to build a ship like Noah. And my ship to this day is partnership and relationship. Is why me and Al rekindled our relationship and we're going to help push people into their purpose. This podcast is more than just vocal, more than just, it is about connecting and building people. Eugene, again, tell people how they can buy your book. It's on Amazon. Um, It's on Amazon. It's also on theathletestudent.com. That's my website. Uh, You type in my name, Eugene Holman, on on Amazon. It'll pull up. Um, You can get the audio version. You can get Kindle. Yep, uh, E U G E N E. Last name is Holloman. H O L L O M A N. You will not be disappointed, man. It it takes you on a roller coaster. I know you won't, and you heard it from Uncle Cree. This is my nephew, Doctor Eugene Holloman. I love you, sir. Love you to too. Life. Yeah. And nothing you can do God about it. But love you back, ladies and gentlemen. That was my bro, my nephew, my family member. Al, that was a amazing a story, man. Yeah, that, you know, he has a whole lot to write. He has a whole lot. Yes. You know, wow. you can look at Tyler Perry, what Tyler Perry, when he was down. He got yeah. himself in his car. Yeah. I was, I, 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 technically, I was blown away, man. Like, it, 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 even though, and what made me blown away, Al, is that I know him. But then yeah. when you hear certain people being transparent, and you think you know what you don't know, like, it's like... Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's, the mental state, the mental state, like you can see, like people don't realize, like this suicide thing, you know, it's it's a serious issue. Like Robin Williams, you think he's on top of the world. Yeah. He's on top of the world and, you know, got everything going for him. How can people do it? It's a lot of people committed suicide. Yes. It's why I, I can't paint it, man. This is a lot yeah. of people, man. A lot of athletes. A lot, you know, so a lot of people just depressed and not just depressed because we don't want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. We, yes. we're, we're, we're not talking about those things. You know what I'm it's saying? A and sign it's, of it's a sign of weakness. To everybody, yeah. you know, really, they think, oh, I'm not. But people don't know. It's really, it's really the love that you care, and you just, it's so much pressure that's on you. You know. And we all are stars, are all superstars, and we all want to go to place, and we can't believe, like, oh, not me. Right. Oh, not me. But, it, yes, I remember one of the said, oh, not me, but he said, no, oh, not you. <laughs> you know? 